So uh, discussion about cardiomyopathies, which is a disease of the myocardium itself. Uh, you have dilated cardiomyopathies, which is by far the most common, and 30% of them have an inherited um, component to them, which basically means that you ha have a risk of developing cardiomyopathy. You might not necessarily develop it, but if you go on to have uh, an insult such as an ischemic event, or toxins, or medications such as uh, doxyrubicin for treating cancers and oncology patients, then you're at risk of developing a dilated uh, cardiomyopathy. Um, alcohol and chronic alcohol misuse is by far the most common cause for it. Um, second to um, hypertension and ischemic heart disease will also call it, cause a dilated cardiomyopathy. So findings you'll find with someone with dilated cardiomyopathy will be an S3 heart sound with rapid ventricular emptying. And then you'll have dilated ventricles that will be seen on the echo. And then on an x-ray, you might also find uh, cardiomegaly with a globulus-shaped or round-shaped heart, um, which can be seen. So treatment with uh, ACE inhibitors obviously treat the underlying cause, such as alcohol disease or thiamine B1 deficiency. But um, ACE inhibitors have been shown to reduce the amount of cardiac remodeling. This is a big buzzword for uh, selling ACE inhibitors, that they do reduce cardiac remodeling, whereas most of the other cardiac medications have not been demonstrated to do so. So this... Um, Remodeling is a maladaptive response and unfortunately can cause, has a very poor prognosis once you have a dilated cardiomyopathy with congestive heart failure. Uh, second would be hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And this is obviously a different type of cardiomyopathy. It's an autosomal dominant inherited in 50% of the cases and it's to do with the sarcomere abnormality, which is inherited. Uh, and this is a common cause for death in young, um, sporty people. And basically, you develop abnormalities of the cardiac myocyte, which causes um, basically tangled, disorientated, hypertrophic uh, myocardial fibers. And these are mainly in the intra uh, vent ventricle septum, which is close to the mitral valve, and that causes um, outflow obstruction. So it's when you have something like uh, left ventricular hypertrophy secondary to hypertension, or aortic stenosis, um, this will cause um, a concentric um, hypertrophy, meaning the whole wall will be thickened, and that's why you don't develop outflow obstruction because it's a smooth um, growth of the whole of the left ventricle. Whereas in disease of the primary disease of the myocardium, such as Hocum, the uh, intraventricular uh, septum is the main source of hypertrophy and that will eventually cause an outflow obstruction through its effects on the mitral valve mainly. So the treatment is uh, to, well, it, angina, uh, to treat angina. These patients, unfortunately, due to having such thick in myocardium, have an increased um, oxygen demand, um, and they also have uh, an inefficient ventricle, which requires more oxygen to do the same amount of work as an efficient one. And they also, unfortunately, get shortness of breath arrhythmias. So beta block is a calcium channel block for the mainstay of treatment, um, but you don't want to off preload too much as this is the thing that's giving them cardiac drive um, when you go back to the Starling curve. So you don't want to give too much uh, of a diuretic or something similar, which will reduce his patient's preload. Then you have restrictive cardiomyopathies, which has can be either primary or secondary. Primary would be um, low flow syndrome or endocardial fibro fibroblastosis, which is ex exceptionally rare. Low flow syndrome is eosinophils, eosinophil uh, infiltration in the myocardium, um, and endocardial fibrotosis is in two-year-old children, which causes a restricted cardiomyopathy. So as the name suggests, they have rigid walls, which do not fill properly, and this reduces the amount of preload uh, that the myocardium will receive, and also the end diastolic volume. And this will eventually lead to diastolic dysfunction. And we know that diastolic dysfunction is a dangerous thing to have because this is when the coronary vessels fill. So when the heart is relaxed, um, the coronary vessels will be more patent and also the blood will flow down from the, um, the, the aortic cusp uh, and fill the um, coronary vessels this way. So if you have diastolic dysfunction, you have less time for this to happen and you'll unfortunately develop myocardial ischemia. So the treatment of this would be treat the underlying cause and then to continue with the cardiac prophylactic medications such as beta blockers and calcium channels and trying to increase the amount of oxygen received by the heart in this case. 
And then finally, you get arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathies. Uh, this is autosomal dominant, and again, a very common cause uh, for sudden cardiac death in the young. Um, and this is when the right ventricle will develop fibro fatty replacement of the myocytes. Um, so myocytes are quite uh, important in the fact that they have not been shown to divide or replicate. So once they die, you won't unfortunately get scarring. But in this case, uh, you have fibro fatty replacement of myocytes, which is maladaptive, and this is proarrhythmogenic. So when you do an echo on this patient, you'll have a hypokinetic uh, right ventricular wall. Um, as these, these layers of fat obviously do not have no contractility to them. So hyperkinetic uh, right ventricle, um, and this is proarrhythmogenic, so they're at risk of ventricular arrhythmias, such as VT and VF, and high risk of sudden cardiac death. And so you basically will screen patients, and you can do ECGs, and the most common thing you'll find is a right bundle branch block in the young. And these patients should go on to have... Um, ICDs, um, implantable cardiac defibrillators implanted. So if the patient was to go into VF, then hopefully this patient could be cardioverted out of it.